Hello and welcome to a quick overview of Excel Tutorial 4 for K201. In this tutorial, we will talk about charts. First, on our worksheet here named Data, we have some iPhone cover sales information. There are different models and the quantities sold and then the total. For the pie chart, we don't need the total so we only pick up these numbers here plus the headings because the headings will show up as titles on the chart. Next we go to the insert tab under the pie we choose a subtype and if you mouse over these it will give you the name of the subtype and we're just going to stick with the first one the two-dimensional pie. Next we're going to move this to another worksheet on the design tab there is the move button when I click this button I get two options I can either move it to a new sheet and then give the name for the new worksheet here or I can move it to an existing sheet and then choose the existing sheet from here we're going to move it to the charts worksheet and also position it between cells A1 and H17 so I want the top left to be close to the top left of A1 and the bottom right of this chart to be close to the bottom right of cell H17. Now first we're going to change the style of this chart and a style is a collection of formats. We can actually use the more button and then I'll choose number 26. We're also going to change the layout. What the layout really means is the placement of objects and the number 6 is the one we're going to choose which adds the data labels to the pie pieces. Let's take a look at the layout tab for the chart. There is a drop down in the top left corner. This serves two purposes. One, it shows you what is currently selected. So currently we have the chart area selected. If I click on these numbers, we have now selected the data labels. If I click on here on the legend, then it tells me that I have selected the legend. The other thing it can do is I can use the drop down and select a particular piece of the chart. Now if I didn't know what a plot area is, I would come over here from this drop down, choose the plot area. Okay, so this is the plot area. Now once I learned these names, then if I need to modify the properties of any particular object, all I need to do is right click on it. If I need to do something with the legend, I would right click on the legend, format legend. If I need to change the data labels, I would right click on the data labels and format data labels. In fact, well, let's go ahead and go into the data labels. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that the labels show up on the outside of the pie. So on this label position, we will choose outside. And also we're going to add a couple of uh, decimal places to the percentages. So I'm going to choose number and in this list choose percentage which defaults to two decimal places which is fine and we'll close that. Next let's take a look at three-dimensional charts. Now, If I go back to my design tab there is a change chart type button here I can click this. Now the main type is going to remain the same it's a pie but I want this three-dimensional pie. We'll choose the first one here three-dimensional pie and when I click OK now this is a three-dimensional pie it doesn't look three-dimensional right now because we're looking right at it from the top so we need to change our angle of view so I click on the layout tab and under 3D rotation if I adjust the X it will rotate the pie so I can make sure which way I want this piece to be and then I can also adjust the Y which will change the perspective so let's make this about 20 and we have a three-dimensional pie. Next let's take a look at a column chart. I'm going to go to the business loan worksheet and this same iPhone sales business has decided to get a business loan and this also shows the payment schedule. So there are 16 payments total over a four-year period and this shows the the balance and also the interest and principal payments what we want on the column chart are the payment numbers 
And then using the non-adjacent range selection, using either the control key on Windows or control and option keys on the Mac, I'm going to select the interest and also principal. Next, we'll go to the insert tab and under column, we'll choose one of the subtypes. Now, when you mouse over these, you'll learn that this one is called a clustered column when the columns are right next to each other. But if they're stacked like this, well, that's exactly what it's called. It's a stacked column. So we'll choose the clustered column, two-dimensional. And again, move this chart out of the worksheet into the charts worksheet. So we'll click this move button and we know we need to use the object in and choose the chart worksheet. Click OK. Now we'll move this one in the range and we're going to close this little pane. And we'll move it into the range I1 through Q17. Okay, so here we go. The top left goes with the I1 and the bottom right goes into close to the right corner of uh, Q17. Alright, so as we can see from this, the amount of the principal starts out here and it is growing each each payment and the amount of the interest is dropping because the balance is dropping. Okay, so now uh, speaking of the balance, uh, let's go ahead and add that to our chart as well. So what we will do is take a look at how we can include additional data. If we look on the design tab, the fourth button here says select data. When I click on that, it shows me what is currently selected. There are three items selected from this chart, three columns. right? So we also want the balance in here. So I'm going to click this Add button. And from here now, the series name is on the business loan. And the name for that column comes from this cell. Okay, So all I have to do is just go into this worksheet and click the cell. For the series values, I'm going to delete that part, go back to my business loan, and the values for this series for the business uh, loan balance are listed here in this whole range, so I have to highlight this whole range. Now when I click OK, balance gets added to this, and I'm going to go ahead and click um, OK. And now you can see that balance is the tall column right over here, that data series. Now let's go ahead and also change the type of chart for the balance. We're going to use a line chart so you can take one of the data series. So remember again that the different columns, the different color columns in here are the different series. So if I click on the balance I can change the chart type. I will choose a line chart with a subtype. Let's just go ahead and use the line with markers and click OK. Now I'm going to again make a few changes. We'll right click on this and choose format data series. And under the marker options we'll use the built-in instead of the X's there we'll use these large dashes and also we don't want a line so we'll take the line color and choose no line and then I'm going to close this so when I look at this I just have the dashes showing without the uh, actual line there now if I need to change the colors of a particular data series all I need to do is right click format data series on the fill color. I can also do gradient fills. Gradient fill just means I can have different colors, uh, multiple colors on the column and I can shade it from one to the other. Now there are some preset colors and so let's say if we chose um, bluish and kind of a light blue or white type color and then we can also choose a direction. Now the 
colors can come diagonally, change diagonally like this, or vertically like this. Yeah, so let's say we choose one of these vertical ones. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, it's not quite as clearly visible because of the size of these columns, but you kind of can see that um, the uh, gradient is there. Next, we're also going to change the way these numbers look. Instead of showing 50,000, we're going to show 50K, 40K, and so on. So I'm going to right click on this axis, choose the format axis option, and under the display units, we will choose thousands. And if this checkbox is checked, it will show the label here, thousands. If it isn't checked, it won't show that. Okay. Now, that takes care of removing the three zeros, but we also need to add the letter K at the end, and that's done through this number options. And on the um, number, we will choose zero decimal places. And then at the end of the format code, in quotes, I'm going to put the letter K. And click the Add button and then Close. There we go. And we have 60K, 50K, just the way we wanted it. Now since we have a lot of data showing here, let's see if we can move this legend over this empty space of the chart and make the chart bigger. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go on the layout under the legend option, choose overlay legend at right option, and the legend is now floating on top of the chart, and we'll move it up so it's out of the way. But you can see how it is transparent background, so we can see the lines, the grid lines in the background, and we're going to change that. We will choose a white fill. Now we can also add a border because that will actually make it look a little better. So we can right click again, choose the format legend options under the border color, uh, use a solid line that is, let's just add it as a dark black line, close. Okay, so now we've got a border around the legend. And last but not least, on the data worksheet, we're also going to add a few stars next to the one that sold the most quantity and that's done through the insert tab under shapes we have different um, shapes that we can insert and the most recently used ones there is a five point star we'll use that and draw a few stars next to it so first we draw one star and then we can just copy and paste these stars. So first I'm just going to go ahead and paste so we want five stars and we'll paste five of them. I'm going to click away from these stars and without first clicking on them I'll just mouse over these and then move them up. Okay. So try to just make sure that they're in that space and don't worry if they're not lined up completely because that's something we will do next. Now we're going to try to select all five of them. First we click on one of them and on Windows we hold down the shift key on the Mac we hold down the control and option keys and then just one by one click on the remaining stars on the format tab under the align button we have a distribute horizontally option which will make sure that they're evenly spaced and then we again go back to the align and align tops of these stars. Okay, so they're all vertically on the same uh, level. Now that they're completely lined up, I'm going to go ahead and select them one more time. So I'll click on one of these and then use the shift or the control option, select the remaining stars, and then right click on these, choose group and now they're grouped into one shape. Now if I move them, they all move together, so the stars are no longer separate pieces. And I can move them. I can even size the stars if I need to make them smaller. Okay, so that's how we work with shapes.
That concludes this overview. Thank you for listening.